What's up, Caterpie Crew? Welcome to Daily December. This is day two. We're doing videos every day of the month this month, so stay tuned, subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, this video is about card grading. I'm very excited about it. We actually have a private Discord group, and we've got a bunch of card chatter in that group. Uh, strategy, discussion, um, stuff like this video, and you're going to get it in real time over there. So check out that private Discord if you're interested at all. And quick note, for the month of December only, if you do the full year for the private Discord through Patreon, you get two months free. So essentially the equivalent to two months will be free if you pay for the full year. You won't regret it if you're willing to put in the work. That's my one disclaimer. It, it takes work, it takes effort, but you will make more money with this Discord community if you put in the work. So if that interests you, check out in the link below. Okay, now let's get back to the video of which grader to use in December of 2021. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about which of the card grading companies is the best one to go with from a reseller's perspective in late 2021. Let's get into it. Let's just cover the different types of grading services that are available right now. So we're gonna focus on kind of the three main um, criteria for which ones are more worth it as we get into it. But first we need to know what the options are. So you've got Beckett, BGS. So Beckett's been around for a long time. Um, the market gives them credibility, good value. And actually about five years ago and beyond, Beckett was probably the number one uh, card grader as far as secondary market value goes. A BGS 9.5 is equivalent to a PSA 10 for those that don't know. Um, BGS 10s are incredibly rare and add a whole lot of value to the card. SGC, another one that's been around for a long time. Um, and they recently made the uh, tuxedo labels, which I think is so much better than their old ones. Um, I can grab an old one real fast so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my graded cars that are for sale just right now on eBay. So I've been dealing in them quite a lot this year and in previous years. So here's one of the old SGC labels. Honestly, that's a terrible looking case. Yeah, that is actually case. kind of ugly. <laughs> Very ugly. So this is a significant improvement in my opinion, and I think in many collectors' opinions. So a lot better there. But they're a highly credible company. They've been around for a long time. They're very viable in vintage, especially. So that's kind of the second option. This one I'm just going to throw in as an honorable mention, but I'm not going to even consider them right now because they're too new, but HGA, cool labels. I got that one graded just because I like the look of it. Um, CGC, new player in the market, but this one has a little bit more credibility because they're backed by the parent company that does the comics and many other uh, legitimate grading. And then PSA. So PSA is the king, the most uh, notable grader in the current market right now. Um, so if you get a PSA 10, your card is going to be worth the most compared to any other grading company. But that still leaves the question, which of these four is most worth it to grade right now? So there's three factors when considering grading cards for resale being the goal. So if you're a collector and you just have a certain preference for case and you don't care about resale, this video doesn't really apply to that perspective, though I respect that perspective. We're talking strictly about reselling, which one is most worthwhile. Um, so you got PSA, the leader in the market. They grade the most cars right now. They're absolutely backlogged, um, but most of their services are shut down. Uh, so before they shut down, they had a service for $20 a card. You could get it graded, it just, it was bulk. It took a long time to get it returned. But that is a serious value for what, like a lot of people made a lot of money grading with PSA at that price. But now, uh, as I'm recording today, the cheapest PSA service is Express at $170 per card. And that doesn't factor in shipping or insurance. So it's usually going to be $180 or above per card to get graded. So that's a significant investment. And Express will get back within a month or two. Um, but $170 a card is a lot. BGS. So 
Honestly, right now, BGS is not a player at all. Traditionally, they're the second most vi valuable, but an SGC 10 is actually starting and has surpassed a BGS 9.5. So that's kind of a shift in the market that's recently happened. Um, so equivalent to a BGS 9.5 is an SGC 10, and it's worth more than a Beckett case right now, which is kind of wild. That blew my mind. Uh, you can compare uh, modern cards, especially look up SGC 10 of like a Zion rookie, and then a BGS 9.5 in a prism, and SGC 10 should be higher in most cases. Um, and BGS, the cost to get a card graded is $250. That's their cheapest grading cost if with subgrades, which this one doesn't even have, but you kind of need subgrades with uh, getting BGS cards graded. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. $250, probably takes a month or two to get the card back. We're writing BGS off completely right now. That's just too expensive. And then you've got CGC. So very, very new. Um, probably most similar in SGC to the, to the value add, um, but probably still a little bit less. Um, and I believe they're in the range of like $30 a card, but you have to have a membership. There's not really many third party submitters uh, that go to CGC. Um, so I'm considering them decent. Let's keep an eye on them um, because it's cheap. They're getting their cards back fairly quickly, but it seems like they're getting more and more of a backlog. Do you know about how long? I don't know. I it's It was within a couple months early on, but I feel like I've heard people say it's it's pushing into like the six month range. And that's a factor in reselling. So you gotta get your stuff back somewhat quickly, um, rotate that capital into more capital, and then just rinse and repeat the process. And that is what I like to do. So if I were to send my cards off to PSA at a lower service whenever they open back up, you know, you, you, you kinda have to count on at least a year until you're getting your cards back. So that money is tied up for a year. I don't like that. Now the one that I'm actually leaning towards a lot these days is SGC. So I submit through Nash cards. They don't sponsor me at all. They probably don't even know who I am, but they provide an amazing service. They've got an Instagram, you can follow them there, um, but they submit to SGC and you can get $25 per card uh, with Nash cards sending to SGC. They send it for you, you just gotta send it to them. Um, I actually just logged an order. Well, we'll go through that a little bit and see what I'm sending. But right now, they just changed their, um, they upped it with how long it takes to get them returned, 55 to 60 days, which honestly is still fairly reasonable, so about two months. And at only $25 a card, with this being the second most valuable holder right now in an SGC 10, in my opinion, SGC is the authority right now for reselling and grading cards. Uh, it's still between... PSA and SGC and if PSA gets to a you know maybe say they get to a um, $50 service level as long as your card you know can be worth a decent bit in a 10 or a 9 that might become the leader again but the, the kind of contingency is that we don't know when that will happen and when it does happen there's a lot of people that have thousands of cards that they're just waiting to send and PSA could get backlogged for another year or two, and you might not get your cards back for that long. Right now, SGC is still keeping up with demand. They did have to back it down a little bit. But if they're getting the cards back in two months, and the value add is still significant, to me, that's the play at $25 a card. So let's look at what I'm sending off. So kind of a, a fourth factor that you have to consider a little bit is um, credibility of the grading company. And the reason that I would say the big three are PSA, BGS, and SGC is because they've been around for the longest. They're consistent in how they grade. Um, so if you're buying, you kind of know what you're getting in a certain SGC 9, 10, 4, 5, 6. You can have a good idea. They're reliable. They're consistent. Um, so I, I really like SGC right now. I'm going to go with them for these cards here. So that's a Topps Chrome Pikachu and then a uh, kind of a rare Spectra Gold Duck. And then that one is super rare, the Sparkle. Um, look these up, Topps Chrome Pokemon Sparkle. If you get like the Charizards or any of those cards, it's in the thousands if they're in good condition. And this is a Gold Duck, but still, that's uh, it's quite cool to find that variant. 
These are the ones that I'm like kind of on the fence about which company to send to, I'm going to be honest. But I'm going to go with SGC because these are bigger cards. Entei Gold Star and Reggie Rock. Um, they're probably going to grade on the lower end, like maybe around a 6. They've got some whiting on the edges. Um, centering's not all bad. Centering's pretty good. Like It depends on kind of how the hollow looks with scratches and whatnot. And they, have, they might have some minor scratches because they were just sitting in a binder. Um, classic, good old vintage childhood binder. So if those ones, if, if I thought that maybe they could get a 9 or a 10, that's where I would consider going with PSA because the value add would be probably more than a $150 difference if I got a 9 or a 10 compared to a SGC 9 or a 10. So that's kind of how you have to consider it. If you're paying $170 to grade it with PSA, are you going to, going to increase your value, you know, more than $170 and then beyond the $25 that SGC would cost. In this case, if they were to get a PSA 6 or an SGC 6, I don't think there's going to be a $150 difference to make sense to send a PSA. Hopefully that makes sense, um, but that's kind of my thought process there. If the card is valued raw above $500, that's where I'm just sending the PSA, pretty much no matter what. I'm like, yeah, that one makes sense. It's got significant value. The value add of simply authenticating will probably be worth that $170 right now. And then these ones, like, this is a up-and-coming prospect here. It's an auto. Um, it's worth about $120, $150 right now. So that's a kind of a big card. But for $25, I love that I can get that thing graded. And then I've got kind of a lot of autos here. David Robinson, Stafford. Here's another up-and-comer, Trevor Hover. Cool Destiny, Kobe Bryant, Topps Chrome Insert. RJ Barrett, numbered to 99, DK Met Metcalf, uh, gold laser, and then an out of 10, gold Devin Singletary auto. If that was Justin Herbert, that would be quite the card. It is not. <laughs> but, uh, so that's 13 cards. It's only going to cost me, how much is that? 250 plus card? 75, three, about $325. So... That's pretty darn good. Now, what's insurance like, if any, through... So, the, the total value, the like declared value that I put on those is like um, $1,200. If I wanted to get $1,200 of insurance, I think it's like $25 per $500. So, it might be $50, $60, bucks, um, roughly. Uh, <clears throat> so, that, that is an additional expense, but it would be the same with PSA or otherwise, depending on what your declared value is. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I've got a whole other stack of Pokemon cards that I'm still like, I think I'm going to hold off for now because if PSA opens up their service for a reasonable price, I want to have at least something that I can send off and just see how long it'll take and kind of test out that uh, market. But I feel like it's going to be a long ways away and I've watched a lot of guys and a lot of uh, experts in cards that are thinking it could be like a year. Um, six months before PSA even opens up like the bulk level and a lot of people think the cheapest it would be is $50 some people think even 75 and that is way more than what it used to be I think a lot of people are hoping for the $30 mark which everything is pretty much worth sending at 30 if you think it can, can get a 9 or a 10 as long as it's a decent card um, but if it's not there's gonna be a lot of people that will have a lot of cards that they don't know where to send and I'm just keep it, I'm gonna keep sending them to SGC. So that's that's my thoughts. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So to quickly summarize my thoughts on all of the grading companies, SGC right now for cards below $500 to me is the company to go with. Only $25 a card to grade. They get them back in about two months, and the value add is actually currently second highest in the market. <clears throat> CGC, kind of an up and comer. Uh, I'm not a fan of of being early adopters for grading companies. I want to see a little bit more of a proven track record. Um, so they could be something. They're definitely achieving some good numbers in the Pokemon market especially. But we're going to hold off on them. They're still a little bit more expensive than SGC. And I think SGC is probably still the play compared to them. BGS, $250 a card. Get better, BGS. That's just crazy. That's not even that's not even worth considering. And then PSA. 
Still the best in value add. Not even nobody's even coming close to comparing for a PSA 10. But $170 a card, it definitely adds the factor of what do I do and how fast am I going to get my card back? And even when they open up lower services, it will probably take a very long time. So the amount of time it takes to get the card back is a factor. Um, you got to keep your capital moving. So that's kind of a big knock against PSA. So we're going with SGC for now. <clears throat> so I'm excited to get the cards back that I am sending off now. And I've got like three or four other shipments. So hopefully I'll get some, uh, some videos of receiving cards back and you guys can see what I get, what they sell for. Um, and if you're interested in card stuff, we have a lot more information, details, conversation in our Discord community. So check that out. We have specific sports card, Pokemon cards, and other cards sections. So a lot of this stuff has already been discussed over there. And if you have detailed questions, we got a lot of people that would love to help. But thank you guys for watching this one. Let me know your thoughts on your favorite grading company right now in the description below. I'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you missed yesterday's video, the first December video, check that out right here. Also, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. That one, I put my money where my mouth is and did a massive SGC sports card shipment thousands of dollars in value, some crazy returns. Uh, so subscribe, be looking forward to that one. It's coming out tomorrow.